Look, if you're not using ChatGPT on a daily basis, you're basically doing it wrong, right? It's a skill you've got to start to develop. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to talk about four different hacks for using ChatGPT to make your Power Apps better. And where this comes from is one of the YouTube comments. So I got a comment, I found it on the screen somewhere over there. And so basically Tracy's like, hey, I need to do is match and regex and right, regex is really hard and can you make a video about it? I'm like, yeah, that'd be a good video. But in the meantime, use ChatGPT. So I wrote the comment, I was like, wait a minute, why don't I just use ChatGPT and make it a video? So it's a good reminder, add comments, right? Your comments turn into these type of videos. So anyway, what we're gonna do today is we're gonna talk about regex, we're going to talk about repeating patterns. So how we use it to quickly write things for us. So we don't have to write it a whole bunch of times. I'm going to use it with some color stuff. And I'm going to do one other thing, which I can't remember at the moment. I will in a second. Oh yeah, I cheated. I looked. Um, we're also going to use it to find a needle in a haystack because I run into these problems with bad HTML all the time. And so ChatGPT is really good at finding my mistake. Sound fun? Well, let's switch over to my desktop and take a look. All right, so to start, let's tackle Tracy's problem around using is match. So if you didn't know, you know, I threw a text input on here. And so if we go in here and we just type in something like INV 000A, right? So that's the pattern of our invoices that we want to match. So Power Apps has a function. We throw a label on the screen here called is match. And so with the is match function, you tell it what text to check. So in our case, it would be something like text input one dot text. And then here you tell it what format. Now, if you were using one of the built-in formats like email, you just type an email and it just matches an email pattern, super simple. But in this case, we wanna match that crazy pattern, make sure it's following that pattern. And I don't readily know how to do that. So this is where we need regex, right? Regex, super scary. Um, be honest, right? I've been doing power apps for <laughs> something years and we don't wanna talk about that. I still can't write regex. Just, it does, it's, it's a foreign concept to me. I've never been able to follow it. But how about my friend ChatGPT? So we're gonna jump over here. We're gonna use 3.5. I have four. I use ChatGPT four and the plugins all the time. You really should, but I'm not gonna go there today. We're gonna to use the free one so everyone can follow along. And we're gonna try something like this. We're gonna say, please write me a Power Apps formula using the isMatch function to check the invoice number matches the pattern. And then we're gonna show it three examples. And then we're gonna kind of break it down. INV is static, then four numbers, then one letter. So I'm trying to help it. So let's see what happens. Oh, look at that. I've done this a bunch of times. That's the first one that's given me a whole if thing, but that looks reasonable. So we're gonna say copy code. We'll jump over here. We will just paste in what they gave us. And now you can see that, oh, oh, your invoice number here. So what, what do we need to put there? We wanna put what? Text input one dot text. And it says that's a valid invoice number. Well, geez, old Pete, this, this went better than I expected. Good job, ChatGPT. Right, so I asked, please. So there you go, right? So this is saying, hey, is match? And then it's using this to equivocate that pattern that we've just said. Now, that is not raw regex. This is kind of like this hybridy thing that is match uses. Uh, but if we needed to go deeper or more complicated stuff, right, and get into actual regex, then it can write that as well. So we would just say, hey, write regex. So let's, let's just go over here and say, Let's try it. Will you change the pattern match to be written in regex, please? Let's see what happens. And so you can see that regex is just a little bit different. So power, power apps can do both regex or its own little fancy pattern or own little characters. So let's just copy this in here and make sure that if we use the regex version, it would have worked the same. So it should say valid invoice number. And now let's type in a bad one. We'll just add an extra character, invalid. Get rid of that, valid. Get rid of a number, boom, boom. All right, pretty cool. So there you go. There's our first lesson. If you don't know how to write complex things like regex, because I don't either, or maybe OData, mm -hmm. then you would go to our dear friend, uh, ChatGPT and ask it. Now I do want to show you the conversation that I had with it yesterday. Just go over here. And so yesterday when I had this idea, right, I want you to see the raw conversation I had before I practice it all. And notice here, I said, will you please write me an is match function? Okay, so the way that I worded this, this confused Power App or confused ChatGPT. You can see down here, it wrote me a function and I don't even know what language this is. I, I don't know if it's JavaScript or Python, I, I don't know, but, but that is not Power Apps. It got the pattern, right? There was the pattern, it was right, but this was not something I could use. So when it did that, then I, you know, it's like, oh, but hey, you can kind of do and use your function this way. No, no, I can't. This is kind of where 3.5 is known to hallucinate a little bit. And so then I just said, hey, 
Let me try again. I want you to use a Power Apps formula in Power Apps. Your output should be something like, and kind of told it what I wanted, and then it got it. So be careful, right? And this is this was my fault, right? I prompted it wrong and it gave me output. It wasn't the output I wanted. Don't blame the machine. Refine your request, give it more details. So this is a perfect example of the way I worded it to begin with was wrong. I could have given up. Instead, I said, hey, let me try rewording this a little better. Let me be more specific about what I want, why that's wrong, and I was able to get where I needed. So it was a great little lesson there. Oh yeah, I forgot, right? Also remember, if you are into this whole chat GPT thing, right? We've already started to incorporate this into the training classes over at training.powerapps911.com. It's in my live class. It's in the six month power platform university class. Who knows, maybe one day we'll even have a whole chat GPT co-pilot class. Ooh, sound interesting? I thought it might. If you got any interest in that stuff, you need help, just go to training.powerapps911.com or you can shoot me an email, shane at powerapps911.com. All right, back to the other stuff. Okay, now let's find a needle in a haystack. All right, so you guys have hopefully seen this before. If you haven't seen this demo before, right, look up there, but this is my demo for making a PDF, right? So in Power Apps, you can take HTML, you send it to Flow, and then Flow spits out a PDF on the other end, right? So I quickly wrote one of those. So here you can see, I've got just some raw HTML that I, saw, I got from W3Schools. I added now in here, so we'd have that, but nothing too exciting. And so then this flow just runs uh, by pressing this button. So if I press this button, and now if we go over here, Power Automate, and we do a refresh, you're gonna be able to see that here's the HTML file, looks like you'd expect. And then if you close this, and then go to Demo PDF, there is our PDF. Cool? Cool. Okay, so that's pretty typical. Now if we go back over here, but instead of using these hard-coded people, I wanna get my employees from my SharePoint employees list in here, right? So what do I have to do? I'd have to go here, and once again, this is all covered in more detail in that PDF video, so I'm going fast on purpose. But basically I would go right here, and then I'd add a concat function, and then close that, and then close this table again. And so then in here, this is where we're gonna generate the, the HTML, right? So it would be like employees, and then what do you want? Well, we gotta do something like this. And so that's what the formula looks like, right? So open our row, open a column, put the first name in there, close that column, open a column, put in last name, and then close last name, open another column, put in age. Boom, right? That looks great. If we look over here in the preview, it looks good. So let's generate this as, again. Oh, I did not mean to hit that. So there you go, so we press the button. And so now if we go over here and do a refresh, now if we click on demo HTML, Ha, huh, looks great, right? There's all of our employees, all the data, awesome. But you click on demo PDF, womp, womp, womp. It doesn't work. This happens all the time, especially with tables. You're like, what? But there's Nicole, it's like it kind of works, but it's not all there. What's wrong, right? So from experience, I know that you've got bad HTML. You forgot to close a tag somewhere. Or I did, right? I typed it all in. Now, one of the things that people lose their mind trying to troubleshoot that, they'll stare at it for hours. Just go back here to this demo HTML, right? We're gonna click on the ellipses here and say open in a text editor. There's the raw HTML that got spit out, right? So it's not the concat, it's the actual HTML that got generated. And so we're just gonna take this, we're gonna copy it, we're gonna go back over here to chat GPT, and we're gonna say, hey, hi. I don't know why I said hi, but I did. Will you please look at this HTML and see if you can find any typos? It isn't rendering it incorrectly. And then I just pasted straight in there what we did, right? So we'll hit run. And you can see here, look, uh, look at the HTML. I spot a couple of typos in your table structure. Seems that rows are not being properly closed. Here's the corrected HTML. So it fixed it. So if we look down here, I added the closing TR. So when we wrote that concat, or we, I, whatever, you know what I mean. Look, right here, I forgot to put in a closing TR. Whoops. So that's why it didn't work. So this right here was friendly enough to figure out that I forgot to close a row. Basically, when you get to start another row, it's like, oh, he forgot to close the last one, I'll do it for him. Um, but the PDF conversion process wouldn't stand for that. So now what we're gonna try, though, is we're gonna say something like this. We'll say Control A, Control C, go back over here. So how about this, thank you. Here's the Power Apps formula I used to generate that HTML. Can you correct it for me, please? And I literally just pasted in the exact code, and you can see with a concat that's broken, right? Because you probably didn't know that the TR was missing right here. I did, but. You didn't know, so you just need this tool to tell us, so let's try asking it, okay? So it's like, hey, here's a bunch of stuff, and if we go and look at our concats, there's a TR. 
There's my close the table. That looks great. So let's just copy our code. Let's jump back over to Power Apps. We'll delete what's in there. We'll paste in what's there. That's when we our TR. Great, great, great. And then now we'll press the button. We'll jump over here. We will close this. We'll do a refresh real quick just to be sure. We'll click on Demo PDF. Ta-da! That is super powerful, right? This is a very simple example. I knew it was broken, made it easier for me to demo for you. But I promise this is the type of thing that I'm beating on my consultants on a daily basis. Let the tool solve this problem for you, right? It is so much better at going, hey, does this thing match? Match, 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 match. Oh, there's a broken thing, right? This tool is powerful. And the more that you know about what you're using, even how much faster you can get to the answer. So there you go. Use it to find needles in a haystack. Okay, so for number three, I want to do repetitive work, right? This is another place that ChatGPT is just really helpful. So for example, insert a dropdown right there. And so what if I went on a list of all of these US states and their abbreviation in here, right? There's 50 of them. It's a lot of things to type. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump over here to ChatGPT and I'm gonna ask it a little bit, you know, to help me, right? So let's try this. All right, so let's try simple, right? Please make me a single column table formula that I can use in a drop down that lists all the United States abbreviations. I don't know, we'll see what happens. Hey, look at that, it got it on the first try. I can tell you that over, when I was practicing kind of going through these ideas yesterday, I had a lot of cases where this was not, it would give me different weird things. I kind of, kind of kept walking into it, but basically that works, I believe. So let's go over here, we'll paste that in. And look at that, now all my states are in the dropdown. That's pretty darn easy, right? Um, let's go look at my one that went poorly. Let's see what happened there, let's click on it. So when I asked it, it kind of gave me like a list of all the states, right, my first request. So then I tried to be like, hey, can you make a table to use this? And so then it made me a table function, but that's actually the wrong syntax. So then I had to kind of tell it that's wrong. So then it did this, this made it a collection, this was the right one, but I didn't want that. So I kind of kept going back and forth with it. Um, and this is what I came up with in the end, which I should have started with, right? Just create a single column table, and then I just showed it the pattern. I think that was the, the easiest one, um, and that got me the output that I wanted, right? And so here, this was the first time I'd asked it in this particular format, but, this is twofold, right? One is if you don't get the right thing on the first try, try asking a different way. Uh, but two, this is where, you know, the those magical 10,000 hours come in, right? I spend so much time with ChatGPT. I've gotten used to getting better at prompting it and asking it, right? And pointing things and shaping my ask to get the answer that I want. This is why I keep harping on you guys to use ChatGPT more. You're not going to get good at asking it these questions until you start asking it questions all the time. And so that's why, you know, finally after a little bit of play, like on the video here, I got it on the first try, thankfully, um, but because I, you know, went through the pain and suffering a little bit and figured out that, hey, you know, being a little more specific instead of just saying, make me a table, because it didn't, the first one made me a table. It wasn't the table I wanted. So by giving it more context. So this, once again, this is where prompting practice, which is what you're getting, which is what I want you to do more of, is going to help you. Now, I'm not going to try to demo it right now, but I will tell you that, you know, taking this pattern idea, right, it actually is from harder things. So, like, um, Daniel LeMay on our team, he, him and I were talking about this yesterday. And so, where he's been using it, it's like, we end up in these scenarios where we have to write, like, the same filter, the patch, same patch, like, 10 times with, like, one word variety, right? So, we'll be like, hey, I have to write this patch statement, but then in this section, the if it needs to patch this column, and this section needs this one, this one, this one. And so we end up copy, pasting, and editing a lot, right? And so what he has figured out, you know, is using the same type of thing. He'll just go in, write the formula once, and say, hey, Power Apps, write this for me, um, you know, but once for each one of these different tables or one, each one of these different conditions. And it'll just give it a list of all the conditions, he'll give it the formula, and it'll spit out all the data there, right? So really powerful stuff when you start getting used to asking Power Apps to do, when you start getting used to asking ChatGPT, to do repetitive things for you. I need to create global variables and power apps for the following. And so I just kind of put the different values that I want here. So Shane equals this, blah, 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 right? And then down here, the variable should be named var Shane, var buddy, et cetera. We hit enter. And so look at that, there is the code, right? And this is a very simple version. Like I said, we usually use this to repeat larger patterns, but you can get the idea, right? All I want you to do is take from this the idea 
that sometimes, you know, typing some words here and telling you the pattern and letting it go and go crazy for you is the way to go. And then what's really cool, right? Then be like, oh yeah, I actually made me those context variables. So please change those to be context variables. Oh, that is not what we wanted, right? That's, I don't, I don't even know what it did there. So we'll just try this. I know I meant to use update context instead of set. Boom, right? So once again, super fast. Well, not super fast when you screw it up, but once you ask it more correctly, you get the right thing. But it just saves me a lot of repetitive typing like that. So using it for repetitive task, another great use of ChatGPT. All right, for the last section, I want to talk about colors. I'll also tell you a secret. I already did this whole demo and I forgot to hit record, so I'm doing it for the second time. Shh. Anyway, so we'll jump back over to a new window. And so a lot of times in Power Apps, right, you guys know I struggle with colors. And so when I struggle with colors, I need a little help. So here I'm gonna use something like this. I'm using this color fill for my Power Apps app. Color value, blah, 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 blah. That is Power Apps purple. Will you please provide me three complementary colors? We hit enter. And so you can see it's like, hey, use this color, right? It complements that. This color complements that. This color complements as well. And so notice up here at the top, it also goes ahead and explains to me things like, hey, these complement each other on the color wheel. So, and I could, I could, you know, if you wanted to drill in and understand how it picked these colors, why it picked these colors, you could have a deeper conversation. I don't, but there you go. It has given me three colors that will complement that beautiful purple that we all love so much. And then what we might do is keep back to remember our repetitive thing we did in the previous one. You could do something like this. Will you please create me three global power apps variables for those colors? Oh, well, it did not do that to exactly the way I want. So let's just tell what we want. So use the pattern and that's what I want it to look like. We'll press enter. And so then now we've got the three. All right, so let's copy that. Let's jump over to our Power App. We'll take this button here. We will put these, not from the last time I did the demo when I screwed up, you know, not hitting record. And so then there they are. We'll press this button. And now we'll insert ourselves a rectangle. And then here we'll do complementary color one. And so then, oh, not on select though, control X, that should be the fill chain. There you go, there's one, there's two, and there's three. So now we have three colors that go well with our purple, right? And so then if you needed accent colors or highlighted color, like you could start to have these conversations and let it help you pick colors. Some people have an eye for that. I can barely match socks and all my socks are black. So, you know, different people have different challenges, but this is one of the ways that I help solve one of my major shortcomings. So, there you go. Another great use of Power Apps and ChatGPT. And I think that's everything I've got for today. So, questions, comments, leave them below. Remember, this whole video got inspired by Tracy's comment. Your comment could turn into a video too. Leave me good stuff below, great ideas. You know, and you just never know what's going to trigger me to go, oh, I'll make a video on that. So share your ideas below. Um, yeah, also remember, right, we've got all the lovely training classes. So if instead of sharing your ideas, you just want to hang out with me, go to training.powerapps911.com. Lots of training options for you over there. Or we can do consulting, help you build out this whole thing or help you build out your chat GPT strategy. Either one sounds great to me. And with that, I'm going to say thanks and have a great day.